Now, over the next 20 minutes, we'll show you the latest advances that we have in application visibility, and then we'll introduce you to our all-new cognition engine that automatically identifies root cause and ultimately will help you automate the remediation. So I'd like to start with the visibility piece, and I'd like to welcome up Whitney Satin, our senior manager in product marketing, to show us on visibility. Whitney. Thank you, David. You kicked off the broadcast talking about how AppDynamics provides the broadest coverage across the application landscape. And I wanted to give an example of what that looks like in practice. So we're going to walk through an e-commerce application. I'm sure many of our viewers are familiar with the process of online shopping, where you log into your account, you scroll through a catalog, find something you really like, add it to the cart, put in your payment details, and then hopefully that electric toothbrush shows up a couple days later at your door. Hygiene is important. It certainly is. <laughs> uh, so, so that sounds like a very straightforward process from the end user experience, but of course there's a whole host of complexity from a technology perspective that has to work in order for that transaction to go through. And that's really where AppDynamics comes into play. We install a lightweight agent across your entire application landscape. And this agent is gonna automatically discover all the different services, the backend databases, the calls out to third parties, all those different hops in between, all those interdependencies that need to function in order to make that application work. And we visualize that with what you see on the screen here in our flow map. Right, and this flow map, just for everyone to make sure you understand, this flow map represents all of your services regardless of where they're running, right? So this is truly a multi-cloud ecosystem where some of these services might be running in a uh, private data center, some of them might be running in a public cloud, some might be running in a, in a private cloud somewhere, uh, and it doesn't matter. We really do the job of abstracting away the infrastructure it's running on and building out the application topology and then showing you the relationship between these services, what these services are doing with each other because no service runs in isolation. That's absolutely right. And we're collecting, we're watching all of the traffic that's going, taking place across this entire ecosystem. And we're collecting a number of metrics. And you see a few examples of that across the bottom of the screen here. So things like the load, things like the response time, any errors that we're seeing across those different hops. And we're using this information to create a dynamic baseline. And this is gonna give our IT ops teams a very clear indication of what normal performance looks like for their particular application. And that way, when they start to see some peaks above the norm, they can proactively start to address some of those slowdowns before end users are impacted. Right. Now, I want to talk for a moment here about the data model that AppDynamics uses. We categorize everything by, as, as a business transaction. And the way to think about that is all the different services that are, are connected together that really map what the end user is experiencing on the front end. And this is gonna give our teams a very clear idea of where in the application experience a user may run into trouble if there's any potential slowdown. Uh, and it's also gonna give me a very clear idea of where I need to prioritize my efforts should I see something in the, in the environment. So for example, I can see here on my checkout business transaction, there's some slowdown. And as an e-commerce site, that checkout functionality is absolutely critical to my business. So we're gonna take care of that first before anything goes wrong. Now AppDynamics is automatically capturing snapshots of what's happening in that environment when we see something, an anomaly outside the baseline. And this is gonna include some very detailed information about what was going on with that particular transaction. And so if I double click into this one, it's actually gonna give me an isolated view of all the different dependencies in, in uh, this particular functionality here. And if I click in further, I can actually see that 100% of my time was being spent in this particular area. So now my teams have all the information they need to go and very quickly isolate that problem and solve what's going on. Right, and what basically what we've done is, uh, as we talked about earlier, you have the full flow map, uh, which is a, a topological look at your uh, services across all the different uh, multi-cloud environments they might be running in. And what the business transaction represents is an individual user taking an individual action. And to be able to go all the way down to seeing the, the, the associated transaction at the, at the level of code, that's really the power, right? You have the broad view of seeing everything, and when necessary, you can go really deep and see the details of the code that was being executed when a specific person took a specific action. Exactly. And now it's not just about going deeper into the application, we're also collecting quite a bit of information about at the server and network level. So giving you that view, that correlated view into your infrastructure. 
So here, for example, is an application, a, a, a dashboard that we might be looking at for our, service, our server behavior. And here we're looking at things like the CPU, the memory. And we can even get down to the specific processes that are consuming memory and consuming CPU. And we're also doing this across your network. So we're looking at things like TCP loss or things like throughput. Again, all of these are different data points that are going to enable our teams to really quickly diagnose what's going on and take corrective action. Now, it's not just about going deeper into the infrastructure. We're also connecting it to what the end user is experiencing. So here, for example, are a couple of high-end dashboards that are going to help our teams isolate. Um, perhaps there's a certain latency issue that's only impacting a particular geography. Or perhaps it's something that's experiencing a specific browser or mobile device. At the end of the day, all of this is designed to create one contiguous data set from the end user into the application and then deep into the infrastructure to understand our performance. Right, and that's something I think is really important, especially for folks new to App Dynamics, to, to truly understand that end-to-end -end nature. Again, you know, from being able to look at it uh, from the application perspective, dive into the the uh, server or network layer and go all the way up to the to the user uh, layer as well and see this and we've seen so many customers really leverage this in particular associated with cloud migration right, That's right. Nasdaq as an example was one of the first to come to us they had just made a series of acquisitions while they were also migrating to the cloud it became too much to look at and and deal with without understanding the full topology so they brought app dynamics in monitored everything before during and after the migration to the cloud, and they were able to do it with more confidence and move much more quickly as a result. Now you mentioned earlier about the importance of connecting this back to the business. And so I want to show you an example. So as our agents are collecting information about the application, we're also collecting all of that metadata. So we can provide feedback on things like the revenue or perhaps the number of toothbrushes in each individual order going through. And all of this is going to enable our teams to correlate the application performance to some pretty critical business outcomes. And so in a slightly different view, I have here my typical uh, conversion funnel, where on the left side of the screen, we're looking at how customers are progressing through different steps of that conversion funnel. And on the right-hand side, we're looking at that application performance, those associated business transactions. And so my eye is very quickly drawn to this red dot over here. So I know that my checkout functionality is performing below the baseline from a business perspective of, of what I would expect. And if you remember to the start of the demo, we actually saw that that checkout business transaction was indeed experiencing some latency. Right, and that, that again gets back to a little bit of the magic of App Dynamics because we are watching every line of code. We can start to extract the things that are relevant in the business. Now, this is one of the more obvious examples in terms of uh, consumer workflow, revenue, conversion rates really matter, and, and that's a great one to demo with. But really, any metric that matters to your business is what matters uh, and can be sort of uh, gathered and based this way. One of my favorites is one of the largest airlines in the US uh, is using Business IQ to watch number of passengers getting on planes and number of passengers getting off planes by city so that they would know that you know, uh, Atlanta is going to have a backup before the gate agents in Atlanta even know that. So that's the power of this because you get to see all of this in real time and you get to understand if I made a change to some, something in my technology stack, did it start to affect the business both on the negative or on the positive? Now I want to do a quick recap of some of the foundational concepts that we just covered here. So as we clearly saw we're able to, to get some very deep baselines that are going to enable our IT ops teams to very quickly detect any sort of anomaly in the performance of the application, regardless of where it may be taking place in the ecosystem. We're going to use that information to quickly identify the root cause of the issue. And then as we just discussed, we're able to take that information, correlate it back to the business, and really tie our IT performance with business outcomes. Now, you spoke at the beginning of the broadcast here about the notion that we are extending our visibility to legacy architectures, things like SAP and mainframe, as well as some cloud-native architectures like Kubernetes, Docker. Well, I'm very pleased to announce that we are extending that visibility one step further. And today, we're launching our serverless agent for AWS Lambda. And this is going to enable teams to monitor the functions that may be operating in a serverless environment, connect it to the broader application performance, and tie it to business outcomes, 
all in the name of performing, uh, providing that end, seamless end user experience, regardless of where the code may be sitting. Great, thank you so much, Whitney. Thank really you. appreciate it. Um, so thanks again, Whitney. And uh, again, just to sort of summarize that, unparalleled end-to-end -end visibility from network to infrastructure to application to user experience to business, right? And that all happening in what is an increasingly complex distributed environment that Nancy and I talked about earlier.